By February of this past winter, I had noticed that my forsythia branches were budding, and I thought, too soon. Winter had been mild this year, and I feared that we would have an early flush of growth and that winter would strike with a vengeance and deaden nature in its tracks. But that has not happened yet. On March 9th, I spotted my first blooming crocus in my garden. It was white with purple stripes. I've decided to try to record the date that everything awakens from last year's plantings. I am a month into that mission now, and I have become acutely aware of how purple and yellow spring is. I am a natural gardener. I never allow grass to grow in my garden. Rather, I plant my entire landscape in flowers. When the flowers are in full bloom, my yard can be beautiful. But during the winter, my yard looks like death. Most of my flowers are perennials, but many are also bulbs. The bulbs are the brave soldiers that blow their trumpets at the end of winter and they awaken the other flowers and shout, Let the springtime festivities begin. On March 11th, I noticed that my miniature Siberian irises were blooming by early morning and by midday a miniature daffodil had also joined the celebration. During the winter, I don't rake my leaves away from my garden. I like for my leaves to blanket the ground and to protect it from our temperatures. Therefore, when the first flowers poke through the ground, there are always brown, wintry leaves all around them. In one way, I'd like for things to be a little bit less natural in my yard during early spring. But in another way, I like things, just as they happen. Spring in my yard looks like the awakening of a woodland garden. With just a bit of imagination, I see tiny fairies fluttering around with wings of purple and gold. Within a week, clumps of miniature daffodils had dotted my entire garden, and the golden daffodils became much more obvious. The more sparse gathering of crocuses continued to bloom here and there. By mid-March, the forsythia branches had begun to bloom. Unlike most plants, the forsythias bloom before their leaves form. And because most of nature is still asleep with the forsythias flush, there's almost an eerie grayness hovering all around them during spring. As their branches arch into the air and droop back to the earth, the forsythia seem like bands of shooting stars. And against the background of a dormant forest, The forsythias are like burning bushes crying out to the world that spring is coming soon. On March 24th, I noticed a couple of purple hyacinths were bashfully poking their heads above ground. And by March 27th, a few of the hyacinths were in almost full bloom and they were nodding lazily back at where they had been. The first day of spring has come and gone, and I've been watching things that are growing very carefully for at least a month. There are no pinks or oranges or reds in my garden yet. I know that those colors will be here in a matter of weeks. But my observation for now is that, at least in my yard, spring comes in purple patches, and it's laced with stars of gold. Hi, I'm Jackie Kellum, and I have a full blog site at JackieKellum.com. 
cottagegardenliving.com is my gardening blog. I've already written a host of articles for my garden site, but I have been waiting for spring to arrive. My plan is to follow the seasons closely this year and to bring you up to the minute reports about what is growing in my garden, when it grows, why it grows, and how. The post will also be on my YouTube channel. I hope that you'll check with me often.